As an athlete, it's rare that you ever make it to the Hall of Fame, let alone the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. And on this week, I'm facing off against CFL legend, the great Peter Delariva. Great to have you on the show. Thank Thanks you. for taking nice, the time. Nice to be here. Thank you. So I want to talk to you about being inducted into the Hall of Fame. First and foremost, it must be a crowning moment uh, of your career. Talk to us about that moment for you and your family and what it meant to you. Well, you know, you first get the call from the commissioner. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, you don't know whether to believe him or what. And it's one of your boys, right? Yeah, Making that call to you. Yeah, you know, and then <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, uh, after you know it's uh, for real, you kind of settle down, and uh, I really appreciate it. And you start thinking of uh, where you started and how you got there. And uh, was it bittersweet in the sense that it was the official closure of moving forward? Was that for you the nail in the coffin to say, hey, you no, know what? No, I never thought about the Hall of Fame, but uh, it is. It you is. can't uh, you can't get any higher than that. You know, Canadian Football Hall of Fame right now, what, 202 years the CFL, and there's only 271 people in the hall in that in that room. Sure. So it's kind of kind of a special place, but uh, when it happens, it's uh, it's it's and, and the weekend that you have it. It's really for your family and that and friends that uh, participate and see it and you're involved with it. It shakes you up all weekend and it, it's quite a quite a thing to go through. And it's really, uh, it, it, I don't know, I'm lucky, you know, and I appreciate it. I want to talk to you about the CFL because I know they do a great job in honoring their greats, but the product itself has been questioned recently in terms of the evolution of CFL. You've been out of the game for a long time. Do you like where the CFL is going? Do you like the identity that the CFL is putting out there? Or some would say that they're trying to assimilate more towards the NFL. Do you like that approach? Uh, not really. We kind of always did our own thing. Our game's different. It's more wide open. Uh, I know my era, uh, the 70s, was a great era for the CFL. If you look at the stadiums, they were all full. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the parity between all the teams are really good. It, uh, do you think that was directly related to the product on field, or was that think, because the NFL I, I, hadn't had, made the transition yet into Canada? Well, no, it's just uh, you can't compete with the NFL. You know, they have the money. Uh, uh, they're, uh, you can't compete with them compared to our the countries. You know, they're a bigger country, sure. more population. Uh, they can negotiate their contracts with TV people. We've got, what, one, two, three broadcasters, uh, yeah. broadcasters to, to negotiate with, and they make a lot of their money that way. We always can more or less do our own thing. It's Canadian Football League. It's wide open. The field's bigger. Uh, the balls used to be bigger, but they brought them down a bit, so it's easier to handle. But our game's a heck of a game. It's a wide open game. Their game is uh, uh, it's more tight. Like I say, the guys are bigger. And, uh, Definitely and, TV friendly, you mentioned. Exactly, sure. exactly. But they've got so many cameras when they broadcast. <laughs> and, I mean, the money that they have to operate, they're over... $10 billion operation yeah. a year. I yeah. mean, that's uh, phenomenal. You mentioned the 70s and how they were great. There was one great cup. You made six great cup finals, uh, three of which you won and three of which you lost, but you gave would argue. Gave, gave away. You gave away. Right. I like that, by the way. I'll use that. Um, but one of the things that really stood out was in 1977, the 65th great cup. Uh, you're in the big O. It's full to capacity. It's known as the ice bowl, the ice, the ice great cup bowl. Um, Talk to us about what happens in this misconception, because there seems to be some sort of aura around Tony Proudfoot about him stapling the shoes, right? Talk to us a little bit yeah, about what yeah. happened in that locker room. Uh, quickly, let us know. Yeah, there was uh, actually there was uh, two other guys, Wally Buono and Chuck Zapek, uh, our three defensive uh, players that uh, went out in the field and started thinking and uh, seeing some electrician that was there or something had a staple gun and. They got the idea of putting it in, and Tony, you know, really took so it. So literally into the shoes. Yeah, he took it, took it a step forward, you know, and uh, I guess everybody, the media, you guys yeah. started to make a big thing about it. Uh, if I, any advantage that we did have was probably that we had uh, shoes to pick from, whichever f felt comfortable for us sure. before the game, sure. which we tried, like myself. I didn't wear the regular shoes that I played in the turf. I wore another pair of uh, grippers that they had because I felt comfortable with that. I didn't put staples in mine. Some people did. Psychologically, I, they thought it was going to help them, so they did. So you let the guys do their own thing before the game. Everybody gets ready different. And as long as you're comfortable, because you got to get ready and you got you got to play a championship game. So and you guys ended up spanking them that game too, right? So you yeah, guys, you pretty, guys brought pretty, it to them. Who knows? Pretty, Who knows? Well, pretty good. Yeah, they came <laughs> out in the field yelling and screaming and yeah. at first, and then all of a sudden we actually the, the first half was pretty tight. I mean, everybody's making a mistake because of the field fumbling and back and forth. And yeah. then we kind of broke it open in the second half. 
Uh, I remember running into Dan Kepley, the great middle linebacker in Edmonton there, uh, TV show, and uh, said that we cheated. He said, you know, put staples in their shoes. So I just say, Dan, I said, well, the staples 35 points different. <laughs> so, <laughs> try to have some fun with it. But no, that's, uh, everybody talks about that. And uh, through the years in Montreal, I said, everybody tells me, you know, I remember that game. I was at that game. I was at that game. Well, if I tell you, all the people that have told me they were at that game, yeah. we're supposed to have 68, just over 68,000 people. 68,000 But people. all the people I've met through the years, I think we had 168,000. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of they, course. Everybody says they were all there. Probably watching it on TV, but... Uh, Definitely, one, definitely yeah. one of the highlights that, that's talked about. Uh, it's great to have you in. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you. And you've got so many stories. I could do a full show on you. I look forward to having you back and talk a little bit more. Thank Before you. we let you go, we always like to have a little bit of fun with our guests and have a rapid fire segment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you five random topics, five random questions. You just give me uh, the first thing that comes to your mind in one word or less or, or two words or less. So first things first, the best quarterback that you've ever seen play or received a pass from? Sonny Wade. Are NFL players overpaid? I don't think uh, football players are overpaid. Are CFL players underpaid? They're always underpaid. <laughs> Is Anthony, uh, Anthony Calvillo the greatest quarterback to have ever played in the CFL? Uh, he's one of the one of the great ones, but he's, I don't think he's the greatest quarterback. There, there's a lot of uh, great quarterbacks. And last but not least, in one word, what is the one thing or one person that you miss the most, uh, whether it's in the locker room or the football field? Uh, you miss the locker room, you miss the guys you played with, definitely, Come for on, sure, right. for sure. You miss the guys you play with, what you have with them, what you go through uh, training from day one at training camp right through the championship game, which really tops it all off. You can't, you can't beat nothing better than that. Well, you were there six times, you won three, and you gave three away. Three away Great right. to have you on the show. Thanks for taking the time. Thank Peter. you. Really appreciate it. We invite you to connect with Peter Della Riva and with us at facebook.com slash RBTL Sports as well as on Twitter at RBTL Sports. Give us your opinion, have your say, and join the conversation. Until next time, it's already done. We'll see you next week. Thanks for being with us. Adam Reed's wardrobe is provided by Carve Clothing, available at carve.ca. Salon services courtesy of Glam Atelier, La Maison de Beauté. Catering services provided by Season Dreams by Jay Anthony.